day once again, Pathfinders, and I hope that you enjoyed this weekend with all the activities, with all the messages that have been shared. Uh, I just want to share this closing message with you, and I pray that God will bless you through it at this time. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you now. We know, Lord, that many times after great revival moments, that we are under greater attack than before. But I pray, Lord, that you may come and prevail against our enemy. We fight not against flesh and blood. And so we call upon your name to come and reign supreme, to come and lead us. Show us the way, Lord. Guide us into paths of righteousness. And bless us now as we open your word. Once again, Lord, come and fill us with your divine instruction. These things we pray in your loving name. Amen. Open the book of Genesis to chapter 32. And we will remain there for this short message. Twenty years have passed since Jacob has first arrived in the house of Laban. Now Laban has blessed him and what seemed to be like a lifetime has now ended. But Jacob's trouble was not over. He would journey back to his promised land, to his home, to the home of his father. But what would Esau's response be to his past actions? How would Esau meet him on the road? Did Esau still seek the same revenge from which he had fled 20 years ago? But these he would never know until he faced Esau. And so, because he was willing to go, he received assurance that his faith may be strengthened. Reconciliation, friends, begins with God. Reconciliation begins with God. Leaving the mountains of Gilead, Jacob entered the land of promise, the land which would later become the possession of Gad. And as he entered the land, the angels of God met him there. Twenty years before this, they had met him at Bethel and accompanied him on his journey. Now, in similar fashion, they had welcomed him back on his return. Before there had been angels ascending and descending on their ministry, now they were angels of host or a host of angels ready to defend him in the contest that lie before him. Reconciliation must be intentional, friends. If you remember my last message, the first point was that the king initiated the settling of accounts. Jacob was intentional in his want for reconciliation. And from Mayanem, he sent his brother Esau to sort of see where Esau was in his response. He, he sent a message intending to conciliate him, intending to reconcile with him, as we have learned previously. But to his dismay, the messengers returned without any reply. Only that Esau was coming uh, to meet his brother and at the head of a band of 400 men. Up until now, he had succeeded in removing every obstacle and invading every danger. But now he was helpless in face of his enemy from whom he could neither retreat nor escape. The Bible says, then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And so he divided his caravan into two bands in the hope that if Esau attacked the one, the other might escape during the attack. And Jacob then, realizing his vulnerability, offered up a prayer of confession, acknowledging his utter unworthiness with a plea for deliverance from the danger he thought before him. He successively uh, pleaded before God his express command to return to Canaan. His past mercies, his gracious promises, and at the same time, he addressed God as Jehovah, the covenant God of Abraham and of Isaac. And through his cry of despair, Jacob was now learning to obtain that which Jehovah had promised to give him. 
You see, when reconciliation is intentional, reconciliation will also have a, a great aspect of humility with it. It will also allow you to acknowledge that maybe, just maybe, you had a hand in the actions of fault that was at play. It was at the ford of Jabok, the joining of the two streams which flow from the east in Jordan between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea and always almost midway between these two points that Jacob had made the decision of his life. And there is only one ford of Jabok. Quite a large number of cattle and sheep Jacob now sent forward in separate droves. That as it successively came to Esau as a gift from his brother, might tend to appease his feelings of anger or at least satisfy his followers for the absence of loot. With each herdsman bearing a message of peace, the women and children were safely camped on the south side of Jabok. Reconciliation, friends, must be God-dependent and God-directed. Only Jacob himself then remained on the northern bank. It was now time for solitude, time for introspection, time to, uh, for Jacob to look at his own life and, and ask the questions that needed to be asked. How far had he gone with his brother? How badly had he hurt his brother? What was the uh, grievance that his brother actually had against him? Would he allow God to use him once again? And Jacob was left alone in the same manner he first had left his father's house. Then on the banks of Jabok, there was there wrestled with him a man till the breaking of day, the Bible says, that that man was the angel of Jehovah in whom was his presence. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And as he wrestled with him, and he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he, Jacob, said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Jacob knew that he needed a blessing from God if he were to enter into reconciliation with his brother. He knew that somehow God needed to direct his path first and foremost. And so he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. He recognized the character of his opponent and of the contest and he sought quite another victory now, a, a victory of blessing, a victory by which he before did not know. He, he no longer expected to prevail on his own strength. He asked to be blessed by him so that he might prevail against, prevail in the trial. But first the Lord brought before him what had been his old name, as expressive of his old history, Jacob, the cunning, self-helpful supplanter. Then he bestowed upon him a new name, characteristic of his new experience and better contest by prayer. Israel, a prince with God. In that new character, in that new name given to Jacob, he relied something much more significant than he ever did before. The power with God and with men, that he prevaileth against all enemies. He blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, the face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my soul has recovered. The man who wrestled with Jacob until the breaking of day was none other than Jehovah. Jacob had indeed been the believing heir to the promises, but all his life long he had wrestled with God, sought to attain success 
uh, in his own strength, by his own devices, in contending with man, he really contended with God. And in turn, God contended with him. But now, Jacob, Israel, was now on a new path. He no longer contended with God. He realized that all his, his past years, all the strength, all his attempts at claiming the promises was but by his own strength. Oh, my brother and my sister in Christ, pathfinder, as young as you are, what you need to realize is that when you want reconciliation, you cannot contend against God and expect to still receive or enter into reconciliation with your brother and sister. When you are in, 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 in attack against your brother or sister, when, when there is a grievance between you, when you always want to seek justice for something that has been done against you, what you need to realize is that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities of evil and darkness. Do not seek to contend on your own, because you will only be contending against God. Jacob had become disabled, for God has touched the hollow of his thigh. In the presence of Esau, Jacob was helpless. I believe that in order for God to work in Esau's life, Jacob had to be taken out of the picture altogether. Sometimes God removes us from the picture. He removes our strength altogether. He, he needs us to give up everything. He needs us to be at our weakest so that he can begin to work for us so that he can claim the victory on our behalf but before he could encounter his most dreaded earthly enemy he had an encounter with God with whom he had all along unknowingly contended through all his struggles and devices one writer says the contest with Esau was nothing the contest with Jehovah was everything the Lord could not be on Jacob's side till he had been disabled and learned to use other weapons other than that of his own might. <laughs> and Jacob recognized with whom he had wrestled. He now resorted to other weapons. He resorted to the weapon of prayer. He resorted to the weapon of of requesting a blessing from Jehovah, requesting the strength from Jehovah, and he received a new name, and with it, new power. He prevailed with God and man. Jacob indeed halted upon his thigh, but he was now Israel, a prince with God. Reconciliation must give up self and be humbly met. Jacob had nothing more to fear. The only real contest now was over. It was necessary when Jacob returned to take possession of the land of the promises, Jacob did not again contend with carnal weapons. Jacob, who is uh, or in his contest with the angel of Jehovah, had prevailed by prayer and entreaty, now also prevails by humility and modesty against Esau who comes to meet him with 400 men. Esau had probably been just engaged in a warlike expedition at Mount Seir, which resulted in his conquest of the land where he afterwards went to settle. This explains his appearance at the head of an armed band. He may at the same time have, have wished to have the revenge of giving his brother just a little bit of anxiety and of showing him the contrast between their respective positions. But remember, our previous message said, sometimes or many times you need to give up your position in order to receive reconciliation. He may have been undecided as to how to act towards his brother. 
But under the overruling guidance of God, under the power of the Almighty and overcome by the humility of Jacob and by the kindness or kindliness of his own heart, Esau fell upon the neck of his brother, embraced and kissed him. With reluctance, he accepted the rich presence of Jacob and he offered to accompany him to the end of his journey with his armed men, a proposition which Jacob declined in a friendly spirit. The two brothers, long separated in affection, were now reconciled to each other. Their good understanding remained undisturbed until the day of their death. Therefore, the Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed us this word of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. <clears throat> he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become righteousness of God in him. Pathfinders, I declare to you that reconciliation is needed before Christ comes. Reconciliation is needed between us and God. God wants to reconcile us to himself. He has already taken the initiative. He has already settled the accounts. All we have to do is to accept this reconciliation humbly. Do not contend against God. But reconcile with him. And he will give you the strength to reconcile with others. May it be your prayer, your will, and your want to be reconciled not only to God, but also to your brothers and sisters in Christ. May it be that wherever you find yourself, whatever walk of life you may be in, that you will seek reconciliation at every possible opportunity. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you now. We ask, Lord, that you may come and guide us and lead us. Show us, Lord, your ways of righteousness. Lead us into the path of eternity. I pray, Lord, that reconciliation may become a part of us. May we first and foremost be daily reconciled to thee so that as we walk this walk of faith that you may lead us in a mighty way. Lord, we have so many times claimed to be ambassadors for you. But I pray now that as we go from this day forward, may we truly love to this ambassadorship. Bless us now and keep us in your care from now until evermore. These things we pray in your loving name.